What's up, my bitches? Nintendo presents. Dad Xylophone. Story about baby Mario and Yoshi. The stork is flying high. A stork hurries across the dusky pre-dawn sky in his bill. He supports a pair of twins. Hmm. Suddenly a shadow appears in a gap between the clouds and races toward the stork with blinding speed. Screech! The babies are mine! Wow! And... Snatching only one baby, the creature vanishes from whence it came. Oops, I, I, that's actually what it says. Oh my gosh. I think I better turn this down. We're gonna have some serious echoes. The second baby falls undetected towards... the open sea. Oh no! He's gonna drown! Wait a minute. This doesn't look like the open sea. Meanwhile, here's Yoshi's Island, home to all the Yoshis. It's a lovely day, so happy. And Yoshi's taking a walk, huh? Suddenly a baby drops in onto his back. The baby seems to be fine. This is very fortunate. What? Something else fell with the baby. Let's take a peek. Could it be? A birth certificate? Directions? Looks like a map. Maybe the Stoic was using it. But Yoshi can't figure it out. Doesn't make much sense to me either. Looks like you're just going in a big zigzag pattern to tell you the truth. Yoshi decides to talk to his friends. You fuck! The evil magic Koopa and kidnapper of the baby quickly dispatches his toadies. You know, because do you wanna die? When he discovers that he missed the other baby. Well, it's your fault for missing the other baby, ass wipe. Or are you blaming it on your toadies and sending them out? Yoshi heads leisurely back to the other Yoshis. Unaware of the danger at hand. Oh my. Kamek's forces are actively searching the island. And... Man, this is a long story. Will these two children ever reach their parents safely? I don't know. It's kind of... Makes you wonder. Welcome to Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, y'all. I'm playing this game because I am taking off for my mom's place tomorrow. The tomorrow being the 19th of October. And I needed a game that I could just play really quickly and put up. And, uh, this is it. This is what I'm gonna do. So, I figured this would be quick and easy. I could get some recording done, hopefully get it all edited. Throw it into the scheduled uploader and be done with it. This paradise is Yoshi's Island, where all the Yoshis live. So happy. They're all in an uproar over the baby that fell from the sky. What should we do? I got an idea. Put him on my back. The baby seems to know where he wants to go. The bond between the twins informs into them where the other one is. So, well, what about the map? Okay, if the baby knows where he needs to go, then I guess we don't need the map anymore, so might as well eat it. Just like we eat everything else. So I'll have you know that aside from a brief practice session that I did yesterday, which was basically a failed recording, aside from having, aside from that, I haven't played this game in literally over ten years. So if I seem a little bad at it, there's going to be a reason for that. Because I just, wow, huh. 
Wow, look at these controls. I mean, it's... So I got used to them a little bit yesterday, but now I have to do it all over again today. So we have little answer boxes here that'll explain mechanics of the game, which I'm not even going to bother to do, because, well, if you played this, you already know how it works. Boing! This is one of those games I kind of got with my first couple of paychecks. Because it came out around the same time that I got my first job, which was the end of 95. Of course, if, you're, if you've heard my tapes, you already know that the first game I got was Chrono Trigger! The best game in the history of the world, as I said. But that was a long time ago, so... Hardly anything to be remembered by then. I don't think I've actually played this game since I moved to Wisconsin, to tell you the truth. And that was November of 1998, so we're talking, like, a really long time here. But again, I'm not trying to make the excuses for, like, why I suck at the game. Wait. Oh, man. The game kind of went crazy there for a second. It's, oh, crap. We're going to need to change that. Can I change that? So I want to change it so that I can, like, uh... So I need to change the control scheme, because I'm used to the whole way... Like, I'm used to holding the button down and letting go to release the egg. Not, hold, like, pressing it once and then pressing it again to get the egg. Shoot the egg out. Oh, man, I missed a couple of stars there, but it doesn't matter because, well... Ah! Uh, there we go. So, let's go a little exploring here. Throughout the game, you will find red coins. There are 20 of them in each level, and if you want to get 100%, you better find all the red coins because they count towards your total, as you can see here. There's, um, 20 of them in all. Which is, we already established that. So, and sometimes, like, regular coins will be disguised as red coins. And when you pick them up, they reveal themselves for what they are. But, um... Let's make it this one over here. But you can kind of tell which ones are the red coins just by looking at them. Because they're slightly darker. Also, you can do this yourself some free stars. Stars are basically like your lifeline. They're a countdown that starts. So anytime you take damage, Mario gets captured and he bubbles, basically. And the timer starts counting down, and you have that much time to go back and retrieve Mario. Otherwise, he's permanently captured and you lose a life, and that's it. So, you, normally it's a max of ten. It'll count up to ten and it'll stop. But if you pick up more stars, you can actually get it up to 30. But it won't count back up to 30, like, on its own. It'll only go as far as 10, so the other 20 stars you have to earn for yourself. And that's pretty much how it works, but then I assume you knew that already. That's why I'm even bothering to explain it, I have no idea. Didn't I do that already? I believe I did. So at any rate, let's uh, move on, shall we? And I get this right here. Yeah, man, it's been... Oh. This game's probably going to bring back a lot of memories for me, because I tell you, it's been so long since I've... I mean, I've watched LPs of it here and there, and I think a large part of what inspired me to do this LP is Josh Jepson's currently doing the DS version of the game. Which is actually an entirely different game, as I understand. But, uh, it's been so long since I played the first one, I barely even remember. But, uh, yeah, so, it's pretty cool stuff. Nice little hidden block here. You get some extra stars if you need them. And that gives us 30. So as long as you have 30, then you're pretty much got your 30 out of 30 for the level. Then it's just a matter of finding everything else you need to get your 100%. Which usually it'll be like a nice round number, like two red coins, one star, whatever. Roll these over. <laughs> that, I'm guessing, would be... Oh, no, it's not. Thought it was going to be the last flower, but apparently not. I seem to be missing a flower. Let me go back. Where could I have missed a flower? So, okay, that was an interesting little technique there. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain that. Basically, what happens is, when you throw an egg, when it bounces off of the wall, it turns yellow, and I just... Psh, can't believe I just let that happen. I gotta hurry and get Mario back. Oh, it's over there. Jeez. Whatever. So we had the 100% there for a second, but since I lost Mario and there's no place else to get any stars, 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yay! So happy. Huh. You even get to make bonus challenge, though, yeah. But it's like I was saying earlier, when you throw an egg, if it bounces off of a wall, it turns yellow. And if it bounces off of a second wall, it turns red. And if the egg is red when it actually hits an enemy, then it turns into stars. Alright. Man, that is a strange-looking background. I don't think it's supposed to look like that. Oh, whatever. There's one. There's two. Ooh, so far so good. Let's see if we can get the full three here. Oh, man! Hey, how'd I do that? Man. Yeah, five up. Not bad. I'm probably gonna need it, because I gotta tell you, man, this, uh... So, I do plan to 100% this game, as in get 100% on all the levels. But, if I finish a level, and the reason that I don't have 100 is because of the stars, then I'll probably just go back and get it off-screen. But if, if the reason I'm missing it is because of coins or flowers, then I'll have to make sure and show where the ones are that I missed. So, this, will get, this could get a little complicated, because I have to remember... For each level, I have to remember why I don't have the 100%. And... Up -a -doop -a -doo. Like I was saying, I'm probably going to need that 5-up. Watch out below, indeed. I kind of fell for... something stupid there. So you really got to watch the background when you see the chomps jump up in the background. It means they're coming for you. So you kind of got to get back and make sure you don't... Just make sure you're not standing where they're about to come. Shoot, I forgot to switch the controls out. Whoa! Okay, easy does it now. You guys are getting a little too rough for my taste. Fortunately, they'll never come down, like, directly... Are you serious? How did I lose two times in a row to that guy? I guess I was just being really... St oh my god. I didn't die at all of those guys in the practice run, so... Whatever. <laughs> it's like I said, they won't ever come down directly next to each other. Ugh. You have to get right next to that hole to make them come out, don't you? Here we go. Make sure we get enough of those uh, red coins. Let's get this flower up here, because why the hell not? You can also ground pound these pegs in the ground. Sometimes they'll have red coins hiding in them, so be sure you check them all. Because you never know, that might be where some of them are. If you're missing red coins, chances are that's where they're going to be. Ooh, okay. There I go again, just throwing an egg and turning it into... ...coins without meaning to. Alright. Oh, well. Man, this level already. You gotta be kidding me. Let's see if there's anything to the right first. That's where I'm always tempted to go, but sometimes that's not always the right way to do it. Yeah, a couple of coins right there. I think eventually you just land them in the same place anyway. So you got the middle ring there. That gives you ten stars automatically when you hit the middle of the level. So that's always nice. Not even gonna bother to listen to what the answering machine has to say, and here's Yoshi Copter. Not to be confused with Raffle Copter, but that uh, whatever. Let's see, we got ourselves a flower here, a coins down here. Just gonna make sure you check everything. And up under here, whoa, easy. I have time here in a second. Oh man, I want to get this flower before. Oh man! Too close, man. Too close. Probably gonna have to make three rounds with this thing now. I don't know. We could get lucky though. So let's just head on down through here and try and do this right this time. There we go. That's more like it. So eventually, when you turn into these other forms, you're eventually trying to reach the. Yoshi block down here. When you hit it, you're back to your normal self, and the baby just gets teleported over, so that's really nice. 
I think I might have missed some red coins up here, though. Yeah, I did. Alright, some of them. Can't tell if I got all of them or not. Let's see, 1540? I don't think I did. I think I'm supposed to have 16. No, maybe not. Hmm. Shoot, out of eggs, out of eggs. But only for the briefest of moments. Yay! Wait a second. Hey, we got it. We got all 100% on this level. Yeah! That's more like it. Oh yeah, but watch out here. You don't want to get up to the very end of the level and then have yourself get screwed by the... Are you coming? Okay. Guess not. So happy. I'm gonna say so happy at the end of, like, every single level. It's just so perfect with that credity music, you know, that plays when you beat a level. It's such good music when you beat a level. I miss the days when games did that. Mm, Link to the Past especially probably has the best, you know, victory music. So here we go again, describes the three Mario's. See, they're probably not going to be in the same places as last time, so I'm going to try here. Here. It's, oh my god, are you serious? The chances are one of them's probably going to be in the same place as before. So I'm going to try, actually, right here. Holy Jesus Christ, are you serious? That's unbelievable, man! I can't believe I got that two times in a row. I never get that. Ah, what can I say, man? The luck's on my side today, I guess. So let's head into World 1-3. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit more difficult to uh, locate red coins, because some of them are hidden inside of pillars, some of them are behind, uh, you know, doors, and just, you never know. There's so many different ways to go here. For example, here's a pillar right here. Now, usually when you see these cases like this, that means there's stars inside of them, so... Make sure and grab those, and then just take extra care not to... ...get hit, and you should be okay. Get through some of this wacky, whatchamadoohickey stuff. There we go. What do you got to say? There are two controller configurations for egg throwing. We'd like to Yes! I would. Thank you very much. Okay, this looks like a pit, but if you actually take the time to come down here, get on the bottom mushroom, you can see that it's actually not, and there's rewards waiting for you. I like how this game actually gives you an incentive to find everything in every level. Because that's how you end up, you know, unlocking the hidden levels, which I guess is kind of the same thing they do in the new Mario Brothers games. But it's just the star coins, you know? So you're not really encouraged to find, like, everything in every level. You just have to find those stupid coins. And I don't mean stupid as in, like, well, the coins are stupid or anything, but... Well, you know how it is. So I'm not sure whether I should take the top or bottom here first. I'm thinking I should take the bottom, probably. Whoa, jeez. Careful now. There we go. So we have 30, 13, and 20. That's an odd number, 13. Makes me think maybe I missed one. Whoa. Thankfully, those rocks don't hurt you, because it sure looks like they would. Bam, I might have missed one in a pillar somewhere. We will be going back to unlock that locked door, though, so... Now, sometimes if you can't reach something in the game, you can actually, like, shoot it down with an egg, like so. And that makes things a hell of a lot easier to get around. And I'm not saying get around again, because we already done that. Ah, oh, just swallow it. Swallow that egg, Yoshster. Wasn't there supposed to be a key in that box? I don't know, maybe that was somewhere else. So there it is. Boom, let's go back and unlock that door, dude. Oh, right here. I bet you anything. No, I guess not. Well, let's go see what all the fuss is about. 
throwing balloons to throw the balloon best. Okay, and the button sequences as shown, alright, sure. It's pretty self-explanatory here, is X, Y, down, right. Or left, Y, down, right, should I say. Oh, otherwise, if you want to, you can just stand here and hold on to it until it gets really big, and then just at the last second, you know. Could do that. Dude. For a second there, I was, a. Uh... Don't... Oh, crap, he was waiting to throw it, too. Yep, he knew, man. He knew! Kind of an interesting variation on the Shy Guy enemies, those guys, I noticed. Except their masks actually have smiles on them instead of... ...little O faces, like the... ...like the op 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 gong style. That's a red coin right there. Obviously meant to be picked up by the great and wonderful Yosh. Go down this pipe right here. Huh. I bet you knock, I suppose. Oh, there doesn't seem to be anyone here. Let's go back and tell Master Luke. Like, he doesn't even give Jabba enough time to answer the door, and it's not Jabba that's gonna answer the door anyway. Jabba would have to drink a whole bunch of Java to be able to answer that door. Sometimes it's worth looking around in these little areas like this, because you'll see something hidden in there. And it's always worth a look to see. This up here was actually hidden. But, uh, because I threw the egg, it bounced off and rebounded and opened it up off screen, so I wasn't really, really able to. really able to reveal it all that well. This right here is an interesting power up. It's not a power up at all, actually, it's just a switch. It makes an arrow appear in the ground, and then seriously, you can just go down it like a pipe. Which I always found a little peculiar, but very cool. So you pick up some extra coins, maybe a few lives here and there, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Not anything that I would be too concerned about. So unless you're a completionist, you know, which again. So I, I, I would think that maybe, you know, getting 100 on each level is, you know, passes for completion in this game well enough. Not necessarily getting all the yellow coins, too. So getting all the yellow coins, that's more like obsession. If I get this rock to stop where I would need it to. Nope, nope. Excuse me. Ready? Just a little bit at a time. Ready? Nope, nope. Oh, oh, wow! This has never given me a problem before. I don't know why all of a sudden now. Dude, seriously, quit bumping your head on the ceiling. Yep, yeah, there we go. Yeah, one last little push made it up there. Oh, that was a little uh, closer than I would have wanted it to be. And after that story introduction, we're going to have a pretty long video here, but... Yeah, we can live with it. Yeah, we got our 100%, so let's do it. Let's make a mad dash for the end. Grab ourselves a 1-up while we're here. And... Woo! So happy. This is a... I know, man. It's trying to be credity. It's on trying to be credity. Well... Surely! Surely I'm not gonna win that thing three times in a row. But, <clears throat> but let's try. Oh, this is a different game. Okay. On this one, you hit the cards, and whatever you get, you keep. But if you hit Kamek, you lose everything, so... Power block, not too interested in that. That's okay. These are the ones you really want to go for here, the stars. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and take that. Nope, let's exit. There's actually two of them you can get here. But I'm not taking a chance. It's whatever. So basically, the star power up is like an item that you can use anytime you want to in the middle of a stage. So if you get to the end of a stage and you don't have all your stars, but you have everything else, all the red coins and all the flowers, and there's no place to get any stars, you just use that ten card and automatically refill your stars. You can use your items down here anytime you want to. So and we'll be showing what the others do as time goes on. 
these buckets here have coins in them. And holy crap! Uh, nice little 3D effect there. You have to keep in mind that when this game came out, I mean, this was like towards the very, the very oh, oh man, that was close. This was like towards the end of the Super Nintendo's life, like 1995, late 95. This was less than a year before the Nintendo 64 came out. So at this point, they knew all the little tricks of the trade, as far as how to make graphics on this thing. And by now, they were starting to figure out how to scale things. As in, zoom in, make things bigger and smaller, without as much of the pixelation as you saw in previous games like Contra 3 or Super Mario World, when stuff would get really close to the screen, it would just turn into a big, gigantic blur of pixels. But what you'll notice in this game is that things scale and get big and small, and there's not as much pixelation, or the pixelation is just not as apparent as it was in the other games. So they were starting to find ways around it towards the end of the Super Nintendo's lifespan. Which I thought was really interesting, because this... They took full advantage of it in this game. I mean, they were really... making strides. And that's part of why I love the Super Nintendo so much, because even though... it was already a huge improvement over the Nintendo to begin with... They really... They, it never stopped improving. Like, it continued to get better over the course of its lifespan, and of course the same could be said for the N64 as well. I've even argued in comment sections before that so there are Super Nintendo games that actually look better than Mario 64, just because of how, you know, they were just getting into the whole 3D thing, and so they couldn't do as much with the polygons and all, but, but you know, by the time Banjo-Kazooie and that kind of thing came out, and Ocarina of Time, they had kind of figured it out more then. Man, those guys are trying to come and bite my ass. Uh, you got some shy guys over here? Maybe? Just one more? Just one little egg. That's all I want. There we go. Well, I did say I only wanted one more egg, didn't I? Okay, watch out for the eyebrows, because when you see him, you know this guy's coming for you. So, and even when you knock him back into lava... Don't relax too much, because he'll be coming back. Ugh, that was close. So I go over here and push the pot, the key comes out. Nice little, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say, like, feature of the game, but... You know, but it was just a nice small detail that they added, pushing the pots and having keys come out of them. That was just something cool that happened in the game, you know? It's nothing spectacular, but... It's just cool. Yep. One, two... Three, and four. There's your fifth flower, I believe. Yeah, that's it. We got it. We got 100% for this level, so we got 100% on all the levels except for the first one. Go figure. And there's ten more stars, just in case you needed them. And, of course... A few more here if you needed them. We'll get eggs inside the boss room, so don't worry. Oops, did I just spoil it? There's a boss here. There's actually two bosses in every world. A mini-boss, and then, uh, obviously a main boss. And this is what I'm talking about when I say they scaled stuff, and yet still managed to not make it pixelate. Because this guy, like, just... <laughs> Looks pretty good, considering his size, and obviously, there was a lot of, like, scaling and rotation involved in, uh, <laughs> in animating his movements and stuff. And there were things that rotated on a different axis, like his feet. And so they had to program all those in and make every piece of him fit together. So to me, this was an impressive, you know, display. This boss here was a pretty impressive display of what they were capable of at the time. And even when you look at the RPGs like Final Fantasy VI and Chrono Trigger... Shit. Frick frack. Can't believe I just let that happen. Okay, seriously? You're gonna give me a chance here? Holy crow. I can't believe I got hit by this boss, of all things. For some reason, I wasn't used to the controls. The hold I thought I was still on where I had to press A two times. 
and so I wanted to press it, and then I jumped out. Not expecting him to bounce off the wall, and then something just... He is so happy. Even Mario's giving the peace sign. Even though he's just a baby. So 84%, I guess we'll have to do that level over again too, but you know what? There will be time to do that, either in between videos or off-screen or whatever. In the meantime, guys, I reckon we're going to stop the video there, and next time on Yoshi's Island, we'll take on World 1-5 through 1-8. See you guys later.